Hi, welcome to the channel. I'm JJ Atkins. I'm a digital artist working with Procreate to produce some digital content that I post online. You can see my artwork on Instagram, but I also post videos here on my YouTube channel as well. If you're new, take a second to click on that subscribe button. It's really helpful and I'll take any interaction I can get. So if you want to click on the like button or even leave a comment, I appreciate that as well. Now today we're going to be taking a look at a piece about Winnie the Pooh and Piglet. And this was mostly inspired by a challenge that's going on on Instagram right now. The challenge is called hashtag six fan art, and it involves creating six pieces of fan art suggested by somebody who follows you on Instagram. I've already done a few of these. Um, I have some videos posted in relation to them. You can go check them out a little bit later. But again, today we're going to be focusing on Pooh and Piglet. Now, the drawing is really something of a different take. I, I have already done a couple Disney characters for fan art, so I wanted to get away from the Disney style of Winnie the Pooh immediately. And although the A.A. A. Milne books were something of an inspiration for some of, you know, of the pictures and some of the compositions I had in my head, I kind of decided to take a left turn from that as well and do something that was just at least a little bit more anatomically correct when it came to the figures of the animals themselves. So even though this isn't really truly what we think of when we see pig for instance, I did want to draw a pig, and even though I tried a couple sketches of baby pigs, I felt like this was the pig I preferred a little bit more, just, just from drawing the anatomy alone. I did something similar with the Pooh Bear as well, went for more of a uh, larger kind of grizzly type bear, although in my research I never really did find something of a yellow bear. Um, maybe they exist, I don't know, but it was a lot easier to find pictures of black bears and grizzlies and things like that. Now, uh, I want to take it here a, a little bit of time and talk about Pooh it's himself. Um, I, I was obviously a fan of the uh, Winnie the Pooh series growing up. I, I thought he was clever in a lot of ways, and, and the stories are always very interesting, very fascinating. But um, what really kind of popped up in my head when I started drawing Winnie the Pooh and kind of going through this process of deciding what narrative I wanted to tell, I, I kind of jogged a memory back when I was a teenager and I read a book called The Tao of Pooh. Uh, Dao, T-A-O, being a reference to Taoism. And, um, you know, at some point in my life, I was doing a lot of reading and getting a lot into this concept of theology and philosophy and how these two things related. And this is a really interesting book. So if you've never had a chance to read it, I'm going to recommend it. The Tao of Pooh, written by uh, Benjamin Hoff. Um, it's a short one. It kind of gets straight to the point. And, I, and I'll sum it up in, in a nutshell here just by talking about Pooh himself. And that's kind of what the book is about. Pooh, or Winnie the Pooh in this sense, is the perfect embodiment of some of the philosophies of Taoism. And one of those in particular is called the principle of the uncarved block, which is referred to in, in, in whatever language uh, Taoism is spoken in uh, as Pooh. Uh, not P-O-O-H, but P apostrophe U, Pooh. Um, so Pooh, the principle of the uncarved block, it, it's really kind of a simple philosophy, and it goes a little something like this. Mind you, I'm paraphrasing. Uh, the uncarved block, the piece of wood, a chunk of wood in its natural state, is in and of itself somewhat perfect. Its simplicity lends to its perfection. Now, the minute we take that chunk of wood and we try to make it into something else, we try to carve it, we try to transform it, we try to, to make it into something else like a carving or a toy or, or something to hold up a house, the minute we change it from its natural element, we make it more complex. And the more complex we make it, the more points of failure it has, therefore the less perfect it, it really is. And that is Pooh in a nutshell. Pooh is the simplest possible version of himself at all times. He remains relatively unchanged. He learns very little from his experiences, but what he does learn on occasion is something that he immediately applies to the simplest, simplest possible solution. So case in point, and an example, if you will, that comes from the Pooh books would be the uh, day that he ate too much honey. So uh, the story again loosely goes that Pooh eats a bunch of honey um, decides he's ready to, to go outside, I believe, and tries to get outside his front door and gets stuck about halfway through and can't get out. And, you know, all the other creatures in 100 Acre Woods come around and they try to push and they try to pull and get him to either, you know, move in or move out and he just won't budge. He's just too fat from eating all the honey. So what is the solution? Well, we tried all these complex things like the pushing and the pulling and tools and, you know, all this sort of thing and, and, and none of it worked. It's the simple solution. So what does Pooh do? He just stops eating honey. And after a period of time, eventually loses enough weight, or at least slims down enough, that he's able to fit through the hole easily again and you know enter and exit as he pleases. So the simplest solution. Now, now 
that in and of itself is what Taoism is all about. It's about seeing something of a joy in life, appreciating it for its bitter elements as well as its sweet elements, but ultimately not trying not to make too complex a, th a thing out of anything that's going on. And whether or not that's really kind of relevant to, to, to life as we see it today, it is maybe something a little that we can kind of learn from here a little bit. Uh, there's a lot going on right now in the world with, with pandemics and things like that, and maybe just taking a moment here to sit back and appreciate some of the smaller things and the simplicity of the world around us, you know, might be a good thing. You know, appreciating that, that that afternoon that you can spend with your dog rather than trudging out to the office every single day, if if that's the life you're leading right now. Um, I, I guess my point isn't really uh, uh, significant. It's just a matter of, like, I had a book that I read once, I enjoyed it, and maybe, just maybe, uh, we can kind of appreciate the finer things in life when we kind of go down that trip in memory lane. Now, if we speak to the drawing here itself, just for a moment on shift gears, uh, let, let, let's talk about how this was kind of developed, because this is a little bit different than my usual method. I spent a lot of time in my in my other videos focusing on a lot of line work and a lot of like kind of pen and ink type styles. It's it's where the roots of kind of a lot of my drawing experience comes from. And then when it comes to coloring, I try to take something of almost like a comic book mentality to it. But with this one, I wanted to do a little bit something different. And, and again, this was very much inspired by the original drawings in the A.A. Milne books, uh, not not the Disney version. So in, in those books, the drawings weren't necessarily in color, but they were definitely a very kind of scratchy, almost pencil type drawing. And even though I didn't want to match it exactly, I wanted to at least be reminiscent of it in the style that I'm using here. So you're not going to see me bring out some big, bold black outline, although it kind of seems like it here. This is more of a pencil brush than it is like an ink brush. And so um, everything is being done in this brush just with lowered opacities or just a change in the thickness. So uh, this is really kind of where the pressure sensitivity of, of the iPad and the, and the Apple Pencil really kind of come into play because you can get some really subtle shadows in here. And again, this is a little bit different than my normal method, but it is an effective one. So what you're going to see here is I'm going to spend a lot of time working on the line drawing itself, but it's more almost like a pencil drawing. I'm putting all the shadow in as I go along, and I'm creating something of a, of a grayscale version of what this final art piece is going to be. Now, um, again, this is a piece of fan art related to the six fan art challenge, and I decided that if I was going to do this, I wanted to do something a little bit different for all my pieces. Rather than just a simple piece of fan art, I also wanted to go with a more illustrative narrative method. I, I wanted each of these images to tell something of a story. And with this one, I gotta admit I cheated a little bit. We're gonna see a word balloon at the end with something of a, uh, a, a pooism, if you will. Um, but th I, th I still think even without the word balloon, if we kind of kept that out, there is a little bit of a story being told here. There's, at the very least, a relationship between Pooh and Piglet that we can see on the page. Um, but that's about really kind of all there is to it. I didn't want to do anything too complex. I really kind of feel like when you see images of Pooh, and again, not the Disney version, but the, but the children's book version, when you see these images, they're always very silent almost, very stoic, very um, um, kind of a quiet calmness to them. And I wanted to, again, just kind of invoke that kind of tone in the, in the drawing that I'm doing as well. I knew that I wanted to put color in. That wasn't something I was going to try to avoid. I, I didn't really want to see this as just total black and white. But if I could convey that tone in the black and gray, then I could be subtle about the color, maybe not put in a huge amount of saturation, for instance, and maybe achieve the look that I was going for. Um, you know, your mileage may vary on whether or not you like it, but there it is. Now, um, the Piglet character, let, let, let's talk about that a little bit. I, Pooh is very obviously Pooh. When you see the coloring go in, it becomes very obvious because of the coloring of his fur and the red shirt, the honey jar notwithstanding, that we're talking, taking a look at that Pooh character. The Piglet might be a little bit more of a stretch, though. And I understand. Again, I, I kind of debated a couple of times as to how I wanted to go with this. Do I go for more of a baby pig type look, uh, something maybe a little skinnier? Do I draw him in some sort of a jumpsuit that looks like the striped jump jumpsuit that the, uh, the, the that the creature in the in the books uh, tends to wear? I didn't really want to go in any of those directions. The idea here was not necessarily to go photorealistic, but at least more anatomically correct with the drawing. So even though, again, I could have drawn a small piglet, I, I really don't think it would have fit on the page well with the size of Pooh. So I went for an older pig just to kind of get the proportion of the two of them sitting next to each other to look a little bit more natural. The adult pig, again, is not necessarily piglet, but I tried to kind of be reminiscent of the character himself by doing a couple things. Number one, the red balloon. Uh, the red balloon seems to be pretty iconic to the storybook, and um, I'm not sure if it was necessarily associated with piglet 
specifically, but I do remember seeing some drawings where Piglet was holding a balloon. The b other big thing is the scarf. Uh, and again, Piglet doesn't wear a scarf 100% of the time. And the scarf can change colors depending uh, on which version of this you're looking at. But I, I was hoping the scarf would just kind of drive home the point of who we're talking about here. I, I'm hoping that, that, you know, all of the things being aside, the fact that you have what's obviously a Pooh Bear sitting next to Pig would hope make that mental connection that says that Pooh is sitting with Piglet rather than just some random pig. Um, again, it was a decision I made called artistic license, if you will, but I'll leave it up to you to decide whether or not uh, it works. I, I personally like it and I personally think it works and I'm going to stick with it. That's the drawing that you see right here. Okay, so um, we started the coloring phase of this here and, and, and the coloring phase is really the only thing that I did in layers. So the drawing itself, that, that, that grayscale that I did was all on one layer. Occasionally, I might go to a second layer if I wanted to kind of try something out, like a shape of an arm, but as soon as I got it down, I would blend it all into one layer, and so that's all we see for the line drawing there. The line drawing was then duplicated, so that way I had a layer kind of underneath everything that I kind of kept as a backup in case something went wrong with the one that I was going to start working with. And then the uh, second duplicated line art layer goes to the top, so that way I can do all the color rendering underneath of it and keep my line work big and bold and on top of everything and make it easier to see. Eventually, once I get some of the coloring in, I will change the color of this line work uh, just to uh, make it blend a little bit more of the surroundings. And not 100% all over the place, but with a lot of the stuff here. Um, in addition to that, I, I, again, I, I'm not really following a lot of line work on this. I used some of the outline here a little bit, but mostly it was trying to kind of render as I went along. So really the point of the coloring is just to get some base color in, just, just to get some tone in so that way we can get, you know, contrast and separation and stuff like that. But after that, the rest of the coloring wasn't really doing shadows and light like I usually do. The rest of the coloring was really kind of going with something that would add some detail, like a lighter green to bring out some individual blades of grass or, uh, uh, some some you know darker brown colors to add in some more shadow to the deeper darker shadow areas of the tree or the uh, log that Pooh is sitting on or something similar. So the coloring on this stage is going to go really really fast because there really wasn't much to it. A lot of the shadow and the light just came through from having the uh, the underlying drawing underneath of it kind of informing where those shadows went. Uh, I believe there's a painting technique that's similar to this where you kind of go grayscale and then apply color at the end. So I went with something similar to this. I, I, I haven't done much of experimentation with it. Uh, this is a little bit outside the box for me. But once I finally got in and got some of the touch-up work done, like changing the color of the lines, I was pretty happy with the result. And ultimately, I hope you are too. One last touch I tried to put in there was a little bit of a, a yellow to kind of lend something of a sunbeam coming over the uh, tree and kind of touching on the top of Piglet's head a little bit. And I think that kind of finishes the whole thing up here. So like as I said before, I'm pretty happy with the result. And uh, this is number, I believe, four of six on the six fan art challenge. So I have a couple more of these I'll be doing soon. Uh, keep an eye out for more videos. And if you haven't had a chance to hit that subscribe button, make sure you do so. Now, one last word here about our caption. Don't want to forget that. This is something that comes directly from the Pooh books. And I thought it was really pretty appropriate to the image that you're seeing here. There's some people who are sweeter than honey if such thing is possible. And before we leave the comment, yes, I know honey is spelled wrong. That's the way Pooh spells it, and that's the way I like it. So there it is right there. Again, I hope you really enjoyed it. Please make sure you come back and see more videos soon. Take care.